Hey folks! Well, things didn't exactly go the way the Buds hoped this weekend. Find out what went wrong and what to expect moving forward right here on the Oso. You're in the offensive zone, your place for Leafs hockey. Hey folks! Welcome to the Ozone. That's Coach. That's KD. I'm the Devo. And we're here to talk all things Leafs. Well, the Buds have run into a little bit of a difficult patch here. Let's get things started. Kev, what did you see in the last couple of games? Uh, first the Wild and first the Jets. Well, I'm going to talk quickly about the power play first. Um, I'm, I'm liking it. Uh, we're seeing Matthews more involved, especially on his off wings. You know, I, I say it all the time, off wings, off wings, off wings. We saw it last year where they didn't, and they just they really struggled. Uh, and technically, we, we do it. We want to do it because one, when you have when you're in your off wing, your shoulders and your hips are close to the net, which means you're actually in a shooting position. But just as importantly, your body now is open to the ice and to your teammates. So um, you know, if we if we take a quick look at the goal, uh, I think it was the second goal in the uh, second period against Minnesota. Um, Matthews. Open. If you look at him, he's cocked uh, in that first pass on his off wing. He's ready to shoot, and you have got to play that because he's one of the great shooters in the league. So yep. you play that, but if you notice, uh, Spezza opens himself up right in the middle of the ice. Um, he's completely open. He gets the puck to Spezza, and it's in the net in less than two seconds. So you cannot do that if you're on your regular wings. So we're on the off wings. It works. Uh, Matthew scored a beauty last night uh, in a losing cause, but we need this going forward. Leafs uh, power play will always be potent if number thirty-four is in his off wing and he's ready to shoot and pass. You just ha you just have to play it. Uh, on another bit of good news, uh, we upgraded uh, the the new DKI, DKI trophy, and we have a new oh, sports great. person. Let me just pull it out here. So. So we uh, we we upgraded a bit. We put a bit of our uh, a, a, a bit of cash into this, and uh, of course we have Chuck Norris, really the greatest door kicker down of all time. Uh, 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 I I heard a stat that he's never used a key. He just kicks everything in, and uh, so we have it here going. It says which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Well, Chuck Norris comes first. So. On that, as far as the DKI goes, uh, we saw Matthews out of his comfort zone on the power play on the tying goal against Minnie. Got in there in deep on a backdoor play. Loved it. And then I've got to give the DKI uh, last night to uh, Jason Spezza. Okay. Coach, what'd you like? Um, well, I, I like that. So the, I, there's a lot to like over the last three games. They're one, one and one since we did a pod. Um, I like that I called they're going to beat Colorado. I like that I said, well, I don't really like that I said we we're going to drop at least one this weekend, and we did. Because you can't keep going on like that. I also like that I said 34 was heating up, and he is. You know, goals in his last whatever, he, he's playing great. Um, but from the weekend, even though. Lost one in overtime and kind of got blown out last night. There are some things to like. One is in Minnesota, Campbell stole that point. He was yep. tremendous. A couple bad bounces on the goals, but in the third, what a great game that was. And into overtime. And frankly, the Leafs got outplayed. But I love the resilience that they showed. Down three, come back to tie. That's a really good sign. I think in the past couple of years, we've been front runners. But we haven't really shown that resilience, and, and that's a really good sign, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Also, though, uh, Jason Spezza, KD, you mentioned him. Um, a, like a tremendous season for this guy. He's on pace for 20-some goals, and he, you know, he's not playing a lot of minutes. But because of where I am, um, we've got folks that are subscribers from the Dallas area and also lots from Toronto. It, they both... Both uh, sides of this have a different perspective of Jason Spezza. So if you're a Dallas fan, you're like, what are you talking about? That guy is washed up. He was washed up when he was here in 2019. He's a healthy scratch about a dozen times during the year and in the playoffs. So what's the deal? 
Well, and if you're from Toronto, you don't know any of that. You just know he's signed and he's been tremendous and he's on a great deal. Well, I happen to know both, not just because I'm in both markets, but also I use a Spezza. So, and this isn't just his <laughs> same bottle. This is actually a game stick from him. So you can't really see it well. We'll take a look at the pictures. So you can see this is a, a Spezza. There's a number 90 is what he wore here in Dallas. Um, I got a guy on the inside. I got an equipment manager for uh, uh, the Stars. He got me a couple of sticks. This one's the last one I have for Spezza's. It's my gamer. I can't afford to, to um, break it. But he only used sticks for one or maybe two games, and then he'd retire it. So you can see the blade. That's his, you know, his handiwork on the blade. And he talked about this Saturday Night Hockey Night Canada. They interviewed him about his stick. But uh, you can't really see it in this picture. But what he did was he wrote down the date when he used the stick. So this is from January 6, 2019 against Winnipeg. Stars lost 5-1. He was dash one. But so he, he writes that down so you know it's authentic. Anyway, <laughs> tremendous player. Um, brings offensive talent. Also sticks up for his teammates. He does whatever is needed. Remember he got in a fight yeah. against Columbus in the playoffs? He, so that guy can't say enough good things about it. Dallas, you're missing a renaissance of this guy in Toronto. Yeah, it's a great point. Uh, and maybe to double down on some of the things both of you have said, in the last two games uh, versus the Wild and versus the, J the Jets, uh, one of the things I liked is the pushback the Leafs showed, certainly in the third period versus uh, the Wild, uh, to steal that point. Uh, and even even in the at the end of the second period uh, last night, you know they they were down and out, and they still showed a little bit of gumption to come back and make it a bit of a game before uh, it turned into a garbage time there at the end. Uh, I, I love the fact that thirty four continues to light the lamp, um, and uh, he's been fantastic of late on another scoring streak. So that's great. Let's talk about what you didn't like, uh, Coach. Go ahead. Um, he wasn't having a particularly good game. He looked terrible on that second goal, got out muscled. But obviously, you don't like to see the guy go down. I'm hoping it's not a really, you know, uh, long term knee injury. I'm hoping it's more like Hyman, who missed a little over three weeks. I think he missed 13 games last year. So um, I'm hoping it's not as serious as we might think. But that was terrible. I, yeah. I'm sure you guys get into the response. I'm, I'm going to save that. Uh, and I'd like to talk about the second period of the Winnipeg game. So mm -hmm. in this second period, the defense was awful. There, and Team D, not just the D. And, you know, odd man rush after odd man rush. Joe Wall actually played pretty decent last night. In fact, Keith thought he played great. But he faced so many high danger chances. So if you look here in the second period, I just want to show you a couple of consecutive shifts. The shift after this sequence, they score on another two-on-one to make it 3-1. But here it is, 17-49 in the second, okay? Here's the setup, okay? So Leafs have one, two, three guys low, dot or below. And Justin Hall with the arrow here, he decides to pinch on his guy. He can't do that. We've talked about this in previous pods. If your guys are low, you don't have a forward support up high, you have to back out of there. He doesn't, and so what happens? They get a two-on-one. The, the two guys in the middle of the ice here for Winnipeg go down. Uh, unbelievable opportunity. Okay, so he goes back. Keith probably talks to him. Hey, look, you can't do that. You pinch. You got to either uh, – you, you got to have a guy high. Well, what happens to the next one? Okay, here it is, 15-50. Now, the puck takes a bad bounce, and it's behind him. I've circled the puck here so you can see it. Okay. So there's a guy in front of him, and the puck's behind him. If you pinch, if you're on the blue line, you either have to get the puck or the man. You can't get neither. He gets neither. And if we fast <laughs> forward it here two seconds, here he is. The guy's, okay, look at the gap. He's, the guy's a stride past him. Now, it's a two-on-one. Sandine's in trouble. This guy's passed him by a stride, okay? What happens two seconds later? He, there's the Gulf of Mexico in between these two guys. <laughs> and Connor, 81, he blows by him. He ends up getting a great, great shot. Wall makes a great save. But 
I don't know what it is with Justin Hall, with the Leafs in general, but Justin Hall, he just seems a step slow. He's not mm-hmm. playing well. I was predicting with you guys, he was going to get scratched last night because of how bad he was in Minnesota. He wasn't, maybe he should have. But now he's got to play because Sandine's hurt. So I, I didn't like their D, especially in the second period. Um, I'm sure there's lots more for you guys to discuss, but what we didn't like. A hundred percent. I'm going to try to keep this short because we're, we're, we're long on time and I got a long list. I didn't like the starts in either game. The Leafs are a very good front running team. So you want better starts. You can't always get them. So that's not the end of the world. I didn't like it. Um, I hate the neon Sandine. Uh, it looks like he's going to miss a lot of time, if not a season. Um, I don't like it when teams feel like they can take liberties on this team. And, you know, whether it's r- the running of Campbell, your best player in Minnesota, uh, with no call, by the way, whether it's the ragdoll of, of Matthews, which I've been harping on all year, dating back to the the, the series against the Canadians, uh, offsetting minors, come on, give me a break. The kneeing on Sandine, no call. The refs did nothing. you got to be able to stand up for yourself. Uh, and the Leafs have to do something, and they need to do it immediately. And what do you got? you got Simmons and Spezza stepping up. Clifford, okay, he was at least out there. He was a presence. But you know who wasn't there? 20. They played him a lot in the third period. Way too much, quite frankly. And he did nothing. He barely even hit anyone. He's done. I, I, I can't support him being in the lineup again. Period. He can't. The guy's not fast enough to play with this team. He's dead to me. (laughs) He's not fast enough to play. He's not quick enough. He can't. He can't. He can't pass. He can't shoot. He can't score. He's not going to stand in front of the net. He's not going to win puck battles. Well, if he's not going to stand up for his teammates, he cannot play. There's no room for him in the lineup. There's no room for him. Period. Let's get into predictions, guys. That's the end of my rants. We're running real short on time. So, coach, I'll start with you. 4-1 4-1 win. Matthew scores against Columbus. Uh, I get compliments on the Borea Salming jersey I'm going to wear, and I don't get threatened to get my ass kicked like I normally do when I go to Leaf games because they're always in visiting buildings. It'll be good to see you guys. Yep. That's what I got. All right. Katie, what do you got? Nice. Uh, they got pushed around uh, this last mini trip. I think they're going to take that dis- the disappointment out on the Columbus six to win. There'll be lots of goals. Marner will be back Ooh. by Christmas time. Leafs will be top ten in scoring. Matthews will be top three in goals. Nice. You heard it here. All right. Nice. Okay. Well, he's on a wicked pace in the last you know f- four or five games. Uh, I'm going to say the Leafs. Uh, first of all, they're going to be a little nervous. Because they're going to be playing in front of the full panel of the Ozone tomorrow night, which will be the first time ever for most of their young careers. That's right, the Ozone is... tough medium market. Yeah, and, and, and then add into the fact that all three of us are going to be at the game. That's going to be pretty <laughs> tough. I'm going to call a 3-1 win. Uh, I think Campbell's going to be the best player for the Leafs. Uh, and I'm going to say Simmons scores one. You heard it all here, right here, folks. At your favorite place to visit on YouTube, your favorite Twitter feed, the Offensive Zone. We'll catch you pretty soon.